Let's do some examples with vectors here, and I thought maybe one would be a rock climbing one. I hinted at this in another video, but let's actually start doing some of the stuff with numbers here. So let's say that you're climbing. So this is maybe a person here who's climbing and they've got a rope going up above to some sort of anchor and then the rope is taut, so it's tight. So that means uh, it goes right down to the person down here on the ground who's belaying them. Now this rope might make an angle of 50 degrees above the horizon. And so if this person right here then fell, you know, if they actually just put all their weight on the rope, then you might have a force and the force of tension might be something like 680 newtons. So what I'm trying to tell you there is that this right here is what's going on. You've got a force of tension. This force right here, this arrow, we could draw an arrow right here for this force. And that's what we're looking at here. We're trying to draw this arrow right here. So that's the one I'm trying to draw here. This one right here. Maybe I'll just draw like this. This arrow right here, from here to here, going upwards, this one right here has a length of... 680 newtons. Now remember, it doesn't have to be a length, uh, like a distance length. It could be a, a quantity. So in this case, this many newtons of force. That's this. Now I'm asking for Fx and Fy. In other words, what's the force in the x component? Well, that little piece that I want, that's this one right here. I want this piece right here. That's Fx. And the next one is Fy. That's this one right here. That's what I'm looking for in the second part. And this is a right angle triangle, so it goes like this. And maybe I should actually move my little arrow so it matches again. So that's the one I wanted. The beautiful part about vectors, remember, you can pick them up and move them. So there we go. So I've picked it up and moved it. I haven't changed it. So there we go. That's what I'm looking for. Now, how do I actually do this? This is really, really simple. You just use trigonometry. And you hopefully already know how to do that. We have a right angle triangle. We're trying to find this piece. So we can use our sine, cosine, and tangent. Remember, it goes, uh, what is it? So, ka, toa. At least that's the English way of remembering these things. That's for trigonometry. <clears throat> and what do I have here? According to this angle, let's see. I've got this one right here as opposite. Maybe I'll draw them all in. I need a color. I haven't used it. Maybe this one here. So opposite. Um, over here, this is the hypotenuse. So because of that, this must be the adjacent. So look at these purplish ones here. So that means uh, in order to find the fx, in other words, this one, I want to avoid anything with this one, which is opposite. So I want to avoid anything with an o in it. So that means I don't want to use this one or this one. Well, that means I'm left with that one. So it must be cosine. Then I can say cosine of 50 degrees equals adjacent over hypotenuse. In this case, the adjacent is the thing I'm looking for, f, or a little subscript, x, over hypotenuse, which is 680. Well, there we go. This is pretty easy. Therefore, my fx then is 680 times cos 50, because I move this over by multiplying it. So 680 cos 50. I just have to figure out that answer. So I'll bring out my trusty calculator. And I'll just actually type this in, making sure I'm in the right mode first. Yep, I'm in degree mode. Good. So then I'm going to say cosine of 50 and press enter. I want that answer. And I take that answer and multiply it by 680. And I put this together and I get an answer of 437 newtons. Now, if I'm going to use a proper number of significant figures, I guess I'm only allowed to do things rounded off to the tenth. So this would round up to what, 440? I guess I'll say that. So I'll say 440 newtons. That's what this force is in the upwards direction. See this force right here, which is really going from this belayer all the way up to that anchor. That is going to make this, because this force is up at an angle here, that means you're going to feel two components. This actual person here will feel two parts of it. Well, they'll feel a sum total of them. But those two parts, one is straight up. See this Fy right here? What I can do, I can take that Fy, I want to show you this, and I can move it. Did you know it's also the same as right here? That means this is, you know, straight up and down force. Whereas the other one, the F of X, that's the one going right from you. So that's the force forcing you to the right. So you notice of 680 newtons, you're being kicked 440 newtons to the right. This is why if you're ever rock climbing and you're the belayer, you always want to put your foot in front of you. Because if that person falls, you're going to feel a force forcing you towards the wall. So you don't want to smash your face into the wall, do you? So that's why when that person falls, make sure you have your foot in front of you. That way you can handle that force. 
but we can also look at the y component of that force. So we can do the same sort of treatment. Right here I want the y component, so I look at, let's see, I want opposite, I want to avoid adjacent, so I want to use one that has O and H. And in this case, if there's one that has O and H, it's so katoa, it's so, that's sine equals opposite over hypotenuse. So I'm gonna use that one then. So in a similar treatment here, maybe I'll write in green so it matches here. So sine of 50 instead of cosine, now this is sine. That's gonna equal Fy over 680. Again, that's because Fy is the opposite. See, because sine is, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So the sine of this angle is opposite, which is Fy, over hypotenuse, which is 680. Fy over 680. And that means then that Fy equals, well, I wanna get rid of the 680, so I multiply it both sides. That means it goes over here. That means I can just figure that out with my calculator as well. So I'm going to take sine of 50 this time, multiply that by 680 newtons, and I get an answer of 520.9, which is really 521. But if I'm only allowed to use uh, this many digits, then I'm just going to say, what, five, 520, I guess. That's pretty close. So I'll say 520 newtons. So what this means, this is, see this force here going upwards? Remember, I can move it over here. It's the same thing. That's why this person right here feels this force going forward of 440, but also feels an upwards force of 520. That's why you feel a mega wedgie, if you know what I'm talking about. It sounds it feels like someone's like pulling you up by your underwear. You definitely feel a force in your waist area. Uh, that is for sure. So that's why you get a mega wedgie, because you feel an upwards force of 520 newtons in this case, and 440 forward. See, if this angle was 45 degrees, I hope it makes sense, then you'd have the equal force you know, across as up. But because this angle is more vertical than horizontal, then there should be, it makes sense, there should be more vertical force component than horizontal. And I hope that makes sense. So there's some vectors being brought to life here. In real everyday situations, well, if you happen to go climbing every day, I suppose, uh, we can talk about bearings again. Uh, bearings are a way, again, uh, remember, we talked about this just a little bit. This is a way of defining directions with a compass heading. You know, a compass uses uh, magnetic fields on Earth. So let's just say we define, whoops, I didn't want to do that. I'll do another line. Let's just say we define then our compass bearings. So we define, let's say, um, this right here is north. This right here then is east. This is south. This is west. A nice easy trick to remember it is, what is it? Never eat soggy waffles. Uh, there's all sorts of different tricks for remembering what goes north, east, south, west. It doesn't really matter. As long as you know that these are these, these are what we call the cardinal points. If you point a little compass, you know, a little device, you know, that has like a little pointer arrow here like this, you know, it sort of spins around and you sort of, you know, it'll always point towards the north. Well, if you do that and you point it, that's north, yes, but we actually define that as an angle. You know, we define everything else as an angle from north as you go clockwise. In other words, as you go around this way, you're going to go around. That means we're going to have defined angles. So if this right here is zero degrees away from north, well, then we're going to call this zero degrees. And that's what we call a bearing, a bearing of zero degrees. If it's east, well, this is 90 degrees. Right? This is a right angle. So that will be a bearing of 90 degrees. South is 180 degrees, west is 270 degrees, and if you go all the way back to north again, it's also 360 degrees, and so on. You know, you can keep going around and around. But I mean, this is just uh, the bearings here. So if we do this, as we go around, then we can define a bearing, and it's normally given as a three-digit number. So normally we would define, you know, with an extra zero in front of this one, for example. So that means if we had something like here, then this right here, if this is 45 degrees, then we'd say this has a bearing of 0, 4, 5. And if you're into flying and airplanes, this is exactly how it works. Actually, that reminds me, this is maybe a cool story to tell you. Um, if you're actually flying in an airplane, so let's say this is like your view from the cockpit of the airplane. So let's just say this right here is your view here. So you're sitting in your airplane, and you've got lots of dials here you know, that tell you what you're doing. And you're sitting here in your plane, and you actually see this, okay? So you're gonna see sort of through your canopy here, you're gonna see in front of you, and this is you, you know, sitting here flying. So you've got your hands on the control wheel. Maybe this is the control wheel here. 
Maybe this is like an old style plane like this here. This is a lot of them like this. So you've got your hands here. Your hands are actually on this control here. So, oh God, I'm a really bad artist. This is my hands here. And I'm flying the plane. You can tell I'm not an artist. But if you're actually coming towards a runway, um, let's try to project this so make it look semi 3D here. So let's say, so this is, you know, a runway that you see in front of you. You might see a runway that says like, uh, Runway 09, let's just say. That might be the case. You ever been flying, actually some of the some of the airplanes you might fly in, I don't know if you've ever been in one where you're allowed to see the front view, like the forward view. I know some airlines, I think like uh, Emirates Airlines, I was on their flight a little while ago. And there you could actually see this, you could see the view here, you could see you know, which runway you're about to land on. You can watch the pilot's job of lining everything up. But you'll see the runway, let's say it's called 09. That's not just a random number. This tells you which bearing you're headed in when you land. So in other words, this, this is like sort of the what the view will look like for you. If we did a top view version, you know, a runway, then maybe it goes, this is a runway maybe that goes east-west. I'm just drawing a really bad job of making a, a box here. So let's just say I want to land on a runway that goes east-west, let's say. So that means that if I land on this runway and I'm heading east when I land on it, what we do is we normally cut off the last digit of something. So if we're heading a bearing of 090, we'll always just cut off the last zero. So this will be runway 09. That'll be written like this. It'll be written sort of sideways. I'm trying to draw sideways here, and I'm not very good at drawing, as you can see. But uh, I'm attempting to draw a 09 here. Like that. This will be runway 09. And that's because if you're landing this way, you're actually going to land on it and you're going to be heading a heading a bearing of 090. See? You just add an extra zero, it tells you which way you're heading when you land on it. Well, what if uh, the winds were such that you were told to land somewhere else on a different runway? Or maybe the same runway, but different direction. It turns out you almost always, well, you try to land where the wind is in your face. So in other words, if this is your airplane here, if, you're, if I'm in my airplane going to the right, um, I want to land this way because there's a wind maybe going left. In other words, you know, the wind is probably heading this way. If the wind is heading this way, then I probably want to land on that runway. But if the winds are reversed, which sometimes happens, maybe the wind is coming from the other direction. Maybe the wind is coming from, let's say, the west. In other words, it's blowing towards the east. Well, then I want to land on the opposite way. I want to land this way. So what would we name that one? And this is really cool. If you're heading straight west, that means you have a bearing of 270. Take away the zero. That means you're landing on runway 27. That means it'll actually look like this. It'll go to, I'm just trying to draw sideways two here, runway 27. So this explains how we name runways. So that's why, I mean, and, and maybe they tell you, oh, uh, and this, this really happens, by the way, when you're flying, you have to call the control tower and they might say, yeah, you're cleared for landing on runway 09 right. That's because if it's a big airport, maybe they have two of them. You know, maybe they have two runways. Right? Because maybe it's so big and maybe they have some that go north south or and of course they don't all just go north, south, or east or west. Some of them do different directions as well, right? Some of them might go this way. So they have all sorts of crazy stuff going on. But if you're told to land on runway zero nine, let's say right, it'll actually have an R on it, and this one here will have an L on it. So that even tells you, oh, head head zero nine, which means you might see two of them here like this right here. You know, you'll see two of them as you're landing. And then if they say, oh, hey, make sure you land on 09 right, then you'll know, oh, I gotta land on this one right here, not that one, and so on. So it's actually very descriptive. When they tell you which runway to land on, you know which way to head, and then you know which runway you're gonna be lined up with. And if there's two of them, then they'll have a left and a right designation. How cool is that?